Well, it's good to be here this morning and thank the Lord for the day and what a blessing it is to be back with you. Uh, it's been years since I've had the privilege to preach uh, for Brother Adam and back in the old the old building. And, uh, but it's good to be here this morning. I love Brother Adam and Miss Amanda. And uh, you can be seated. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter number 2. Uh, I appreciate, the, like I say, the opportunity to be here and try to help you this morning. And I uh, pray that the kind of... The Lord's kind of put two different messages together this morning, and uh, I'm not going to preach both of them. Uh, I'm just going to try. He showed me some things on one of these that's kind of brought in from another, and and uh, as I was studying and praying early this morning, and I'm thankful for that. But it is good to be here. Glad I'm saved. Amen. And glad to thank God for my family. And yes, I am proud of them. I'll be honest with you. And I'd rather my kids be singing and playing uh, for the glory of God than hitting a ball. Amen. I mean that. Uh, I don't have anything against ball. And uh, I'm, my boys plays ball. And my, one of my girls played ball. And the oldest one, she shoots competition archery and breaks horses. And I don't have nothing problem with extracurricular activities. But I sure am glad my kids know how to serve the Lord. And, uh, you know, if we were raised in a generation today that knows nothing about service, and uh, they know nothing about serving fellow man, they know nothing about serving the church, they know nothing about serving God, and uh, my heart's desire is, is that I would raise my children to be servants of the Lord. And that's all we are. That's all we are. And sometimes we forgive that. We forget that we're just servants. You know, a servant that doesn't have a, a, a choice of where he wants to serve. Uh, you know, uh, I've met a lot of young preachers in my life, and they say, well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I, I want to do this, and I want to pastor this size church, and I want to pastor this size church. I just want to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to serve Him. And, uh, man, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here this morning. If you have your Bible, Genesis chapter number 2, and uh, we'll begin reading here, or, and go to chapter number 3. We'll just skip on over to chapter number 3. And uh, you pray for us this morning. We'll try not to be too long and try to, try to help you. Try to help you today. And uh, no, verse number one of Genesis chapter number three. The Bible says this, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, and neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Amen. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked. And I hid myself, and he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Father, I love you. Lord, I thank you, God, for this day. Lord, I thank you, God, for your precious word. And Lord, I pray this morning that, God, that you would use us. Lord, I thank you for this church. Lord, this pastor, this people. Lord, you know what they stand in need of this morning. And Lord, I pray that, God, that you would take my body, take my lips, take my mind. Lord, I give them to you today. Lord, I pray that you'd use me for your honor and your glory. Help me to be an encouragement, God, to your children today in Jesus name I humbly pray amen. amen very familiar passage of scripture and uh, I'll, get, I'll get into the message in just a moment but there's some things that I I, I want to bring out to you this morning 
As I come in and they were watching the video for Sunday school of, uh, of, the, of what's happening in our nation and how they were, uh, our religious freedoms are being attacked. And honestly, uh, it's more than an attack. It, we're already losing them. That's right. that's um, right. There's a lot that's already lost that uh, we are just blind to, that we really don't want to see or we really don't want to admit that it's already happening. But there's a choice. Uh, Brother Adam made a, made a statement at the end of the Sunday school um, there. He says, we've got a choice and we need to choose to serve the Lord. Right. Reminded me of Joshua over there where he said, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I thank God today that I serve a God of choice. That He allows me to choose. I'm glad that I got up this morning and that I could choose some things. I'm glad that I made a choice to get out of bed. I'm honest. I'm glad I had that choice. I had that right. I'm glad I'm not a pawn on God's chessboard. I, I'm glad that God's got a plan for me, and I'm glad that there's a perfect will of God for every man, woman, boy, and girl's life. But I'm glad that God gives me the right of choice to walk in His will or not to walk in His will. That's right. That's exactly right. Thank God that I have that freedom of choice. But my problem with my choice is that I don't always make the best of them. More times than not, I have found in my life that I don't always make a good choice. Hey, I'm glad the one good choice that I did make, I'll say this, was I was glad that I chose the Lord. Hey, hey, amen. First of all, I'm glad that he chose me. The Bible says, he says, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Thank God that he chose me, but thank God he gave me a choice to play on his team. Thank God. Thank God that I, that I made a choice to surrender to the ministry. Thank God that he called me, but thank God that he, I made a choice to surrender. And I said, Lord, yes, I, I want to go. And yes, Lord, I want to do. Thank God that I chose the wife that I chose. Amen. Amen. I, they ought to be some other men ought to be saying some amens about the wife that you chose. Hey, you could have a harlot for a wife. You could have somebody that's already walked out and left you and the young ones. Uh, you could have anybody today, but God's gave you a good loving wife that'll stand by you and support you and love you and raise your children. Amen. Hallelujah for the choice that I made in my wife. And may I say this, and I can say this because she's mine, I made a choice of a good looking wife. Amen. <laughs> My daddy always said, he said, you'll always, he said, you'll marry an ugly woman. I said, I won't. He said, how do you know? I said, because I ain't married an ugly woman. <laughs> I said, I ain't going to marry no ugly woman. Right. And he says, well, how do you know she's going to be pretty? I said, because she's going to be pretty to me, because I ain't going to marry her. Right. And she is. She's beautiful. Now, you may think that she's ugly, and that's your choice. But I chose her. Hallelujah. I, I chose her to go home with me, not with you. Amen. 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 So. But thank God for the freedom of choice. Amen. But sometimes I make some bad choices. Let's look here in Genesis chapter number 2. Go back just one page. Verse number 8. Let's look here at... And there's some things in the garden. And I say, I've got two messages running. One's running this way and one's running this way. Okay? And I'm trying to bring them together. And uh, let's look at the garden this morning and some things that happened in the garden. And, and you'll notice in your Bible, I'm, I'm a Bible student. I, I'm not a scholar. I'm just a Bible student. And I love my Bible. But notice here, you'll notice in your Bible, there's two significant gardens in the Word of God. One, you'll find the first Adam in. And the other one, you'll find the second Adam in. And in both gardens, you'll find that both men made a choice. And in the first garden, you'll find in the Garden of Eden, the first Adam said, I'll do it my way, you can have yours. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the second Adam said, I'll do it your way, you can have mine. And I want to preach to you this morning, it's which garden do you find yourself in? That's good. Which garden are you going to choose to live in? Let's look here in verse number 8 of chapter number 2. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and they put the man 
And there he put the man whom he had formed. May I say this today, here's God's pleasure, because my Bible tells me in Revelation chapter 4, For thou art worthy to receive praise and honor and glory. And he says, For thou hast created things for thy good pleasure. The Lord has created this earth for his good pleasure. The Lord, the Bible tells us that God has created this earth to be inhabited. Now, I know there's a bunch today that's looking for another world. Hey, I, I'm not looking for another world as far as, my, as far as the physical earth or the physical atmosphere, but I am looking for another world I, I, in that third heaven there above, above the moon and the stars. I, I, but beloved, I'm not looking for a Mars to go to. I, I'm not looking for a Jupiter to go to. I'm not looking for another earth or another galaxy to go to. I, I read there, I can't remember the, the man's name. He's an atheist and God God took his voice uh, and he took his all of his uh, uh, faculties and he speaks through that. Uh, what's his name, honey? I'm um, the guy in the wheelchair. Dawkins? Daw 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 Is that right? Hawkins. Hawkins. And he came out just in the last several weeks and our last several months and he says, We must find a new place to live because the earth is going to destroy. Hey, I'm not looking for a new earth. I'm looking for a new heaven, praise God. Hey, praise God, I found God's garden here on this earth. I'm what God has created for me, for me to enjoy. And when it's for his pleasure. Now look, look at this. Not only God's pleasure, but look at God's provision. The Bible says now the ground... God made the, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the side and good for food, and a tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Listen, child of God. God has the ability, God has the desire to provide for you and I everything that we need. Amen. I do not have a father today that keeps presents and gifts from his children. Amen. My Bible tells me that every good and perfect gift come down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness. And he said, how many of you would have a son that if he asked for bread, would you give him a stone? And thank God today that I've got a God that provides for me. I, I'm beloved, it may not be how he provides for others, but thank God today you're looking at one that got up this morning with a roof over his head, a, a clothes on his back, a, a food to eat, a, a car to drive, a, a air to breathe. Thank God for his provisions in my life. Amen. And may I say this to you today, what God provides for you is better than anything you can provide for yourself. What God provides for you and God's got provisions for you in this life. I'm so glad he sees what we don't. Amen. When I see the storm he sees the sun. When I see the rain he sees the growth that it's going to bring forward. When I see the clouds he just sees the shades that he's causing. I'm glad that my God sees what I don't. But I'm glad he's a God of provision. And then he's a God of protection. Look at this. But of the tree, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thank God for God's protection. Do you realize you hold in your hand King James Bible that you've got God's protection for your life? I mean, think about it just for a moment. God's guidelines for my life and your life is recorded in 66 books of this Bible. We don't need a new book. We don't need a new way. We just need the same way. And we just need to know what that word says. And we need to live by that word. God's protection. You lay down with dogs, you're going to get fleas. Plain and simple fact. You mess with manure, what's going to happen, brother? You're going to stink, all right? God's protection. I mean, there's some principles that God has put in his word. Right. And he, and he gives us his word and he says, don't do that. Don't go there. Do this. These are the parameters of life that I want you to operate in. Right. And I provided everything you need. But not only that, think about the protections of God. I thought about this this morning. 
And, he's, and pardon me, and I know this is being recorded, and I, I thank God, and your pastor's going to laugh about this, and I, I'm, I'm going to use a different word. I thank God for some dumb donkeys in my life. Yeah. I'm talking about God's protection. Yeah. I'm talking about some dumb donkeys. What do you mean? Well, my I recall over there in Numbers chapter 22 where this man named Balaam had asked God for some direction and, and he didn't like God's counsel. Right. And he said, I'm going to go do it anyway. Right. But God used a dumb donkey. Right. I'm talking about a dumb donkey to protect that man. Right. And thank God for some dumb donkeys in my life where I refuse to heed the word of God and I refuse to follow the spirit of God. I, and God used some things in my life to keep me from destroying right. my life. Hey. Thank God for some dumb donkeys. God's protection. Not only God's protection, but let's look in verse 18. Let's look at God's perception. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. Amen. Adam didn't even know what he needed. <laughs> he didn't know what he needed. He didn't know that he needed a wife. He didn't say that Adam saw that he was alone and saw that it was not good. No. Hey, I, I, there, that song again, I'm glad he sees what we don't. I, I'm thank God that God looked down upon man and said, hey, it's not good for him to be alone. I'll make it help me for him. Yes, right. Thank God for his perception that he knows what I need even when I don't. Sometimes in my life I find God doing things and I say, Lord, I don't understand and I don't know what you're doing. And Lord, I really don't like it. Yeah. Right. But I'm glad he sees what we don't. Right. I'm glad he's got a perception that I don't. Amen. One day my eyes and my sight, I'll see it as he sees it. But now I don't always do. So what do I have to do? I just have to trust him. What do you have to do? We just have to trust him. Let's go a little bit further. God's perception. Now let's look at Satan's plan. Satan's plan in the life of a child of God is to thwart, to change, to cause you to change your perception of the goodness of God. Now I know where I'm at. And if I ask the question, ain't God good, how many amens would I get? I won't ask it again. Ain't God good? Amen. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. But our problem is, sometimes in our life, we don't believe we serve the best God. We believe we serve a good God. We believe we serve a great God. But there are times in our life where we don't believe that we serve the best God. Because if you and I believe that we serve the best God and that God had the best interest of me and you in our lives, we'd always make good choices. The devil would not ever bother us because he would know where we stood. But Satan's got a plan. And in our provision that God's provided for us and in this wonderful life that God's provided for us. Look at this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, if God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What's the first thing when we become tempted that Satan begins to tempt us with? And we know this. He begins to challenge us with the Word of God. Well, does God's Word really mean that? Or do I really believe that? Or does it really apply to me? Now, I know that God did it for Moses. And I know that God did it for Abraham. And I know what God did for Paul. But is God going to do it for me? I know what God did for John on the Isle of Patmos. But is God going to do it for me? 
Do I serve the same God? We serve the same God. Hey, He is God and besides Him there is none other. And He never changes. Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Man, thank God for that. But notice Satan's plan here. His plans to deceive. His plans to discourage. His plans to cause you to die. His plans to destroy your life. And let you end in death. Notice what he said. He said, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the tree of the tree we fruit of the tree was in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, ye shall not surely die. You know what Satan wants in your life? He wants you to become God's judge and not God's worshiper. I'm going to say that again. He wants you to become God's judge and not God's worshiper. He wants you to begin to judge God and question everything that God begins to do in your life and everything that God's provided for your life because, beloved, the moment that you begin to question is the moment you quit worshiping. That's right. All right. And when you even have the slightest inclination that God's not doing His best for you, you and I are already on a slippery slope. But he said, yea, if God said, ye shall not surely die. You'll be his gods. Your God's holding things back from you. Yeah. Your God's causing this trouble on you. Your God's causing this grief on you. Right. You ever heard that line? Right. Well, you just better off before you ever got in church. You just better off before you ever got in the ministry. You ever heard that? Yeah. How many times you thought about it? You know what you've done? You begin to judge God instead of worship God. Because I want to tell you something. You can stand up here and sing. We can stand up here and preach. We can stand up here and raise our hand. But it ain't true worship. It may be praise, but it's not true worship with those thoughts in our heart. When we have got to the point in our lives where we don't believe that God is the best for us and that God's will is the best for us and we begin to judge Him in His actions and in His attributes, then you and I quit worshiping. And then we begin to make bad choices. Listen to me. It is when we begin to judge God and put ourselves in God's position that we begin to make bad choices. Notice what happened. Eve began to judge God. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also in her husband with her and he did eat. Now, let me throw this Bible Sunday school lesson in here with you just a second right here. There's three types right here I want you to see. Man's the head, the woman's the heart, and the serpent's lust. Are you listening? Man's the head, the woman's the heart, and the serpent's lust. When the heart follows lust and the head follows the heart, it will always lead to sin. Every time. Every time. I'm going to say that again. When the heart follows lust and the head follows the heart, it will always lead to sin. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, I just feel it in my heart. That's what God wants me to do. Well, I ate some soup beans one time and I felt some things in my heart and I thought I was dying. It's called heartburn. Uh, you can't trust your heart. The Bible says trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not trust in your heart with all thine Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him that he shall direct thy path. 
Let me say this for you. God's will sometimes, more than sometimes, most of the time, does not make sense. Am I fair to say that? It just don't make sense. Why, Lord? Because I said so. You better watch what you follow. She began to question God. But look at this. We're going back to the choice right here. God's permission. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. First of all, I'm going to go back. I'm not going to preach it again. Thank God for a God of choice. Thank God I have the right of choice. Thank God God gives me a choice. But always my choices are not the best choice. But when I make choices and when you make choices, I, I beloved, you'll have to sleep with those choices that you make. We can't get away from them. That's what I teach my children. You can do whatever you want, but there's consequences. There's consequences. There's consequences for the words that you say. There's consequences for the clothes that you wear. There's consequences for the deeds that you do. There's even consequences for the thoughts that you think. But it's your choice. It's your choice. And notice this, what happened here when God gave her the choice, but thank God they gave her a choice. And, but she made her own choice. Look at the dis man's discovery or man's plight. We have God's permission in verse 6 and we have man's plight in verse 7. Notice this, they became a co she became conscious. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. And then you got construction. What'd they do? <laughs> They began to construct things. To, they made themselves aprons. They began to hide. They, they made that construction for that concealment because they didn't want nobody to see what was really on the inside. They didn't know they didn't want God to see what they had become. Can I step down and not mess up? They didn't want to see, they didn't want God to see what they'd become. They didn't want the church to see what they had become. They didn't want their friends to see what they had become. So they began to construct this facade that I'm all right. Yeah. All because of the choice that they had made. Mm -hmm. right. And all this construction that they were doing was just, they were concealing the sin that was in their life because of their bad choice. Right. You know what they said to God? They said, God... I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Right. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. Right. I'm going to go to church the way I want to go to church. I'm going to do it my way. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on the facade. I'm going to carry my King James Bible. I'm going to listen to gospel music. I'm going to go to church visitation. I'm going to be at the house of God. But God, you and I both know, me and you ain't right. Amen. You know what we begin to do? Is we try to hide it and it don't work. I'm going to back up on the stage, kind of like a... We try to hide it. But notice this. And this is what amazes me about the God that I serve. And I tell you, I'm preaching fast and I, I got about two more points I'm going to be done. This is what amazes me. And I... It's look in verse number eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where are you? What grace. 
What mercy. If I was God, I'd have killed him. I said, you're dead. I'm starting over. But not my God. Knowing the wickedness of their sin. Knowing their mindset and knowing their attitude. He came to where they were. That's right. They didn't have to go to where he was. He came to where they was. And he didn't come with the rod of iron saying, I'm going to kill you. He didn't come with a rod, uh, uh, rod and say, I'm going to beat you. He come with compassion and mercy and grace and love and said, where are you? I fellowshiped with you yesterday. This is our place. This is our garden. Where are you? Now we know that God knows where he was. But he says, Adam, Nathan, Caleb, of the waters, where are you? What's happened? What I've done for you, not enough. Do I not love you enough? Have I not provided for you enough? Amen. Where are you? What has caused you to forsake me? Where are you? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Do you understand this relationship that you and I are in? It was planned by him. The Bible says he's a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. It was purchased by him. And whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And it's pursued by him. He's pursuing you. Well, he's pursuing you. So often we think that we're pursuing after God, but in reality, God's pursuing after us because he loves us. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Our problem is, the Bible says over there in Genesis chapter 18, and the Lord stood yet before Abraham. And the next word says, and Abraham drew near our problems in our life is is that most of us the Lord stands before us but we never draw near my Bible teaches me draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you he's there he's pursued after us but you see our problem with our life is that once we begin to walk in this darkness and this co cover of concealment is that we get to believe in the lie that we're trying to get everybody else to, to believe. Oh, I'm okay. I'm all right. My relationship with the Lord's good. I'm good. Right, right. See, that's what happened in Adam's life. But notice here, look at this. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Thank God. Now listen to me. And I got two things and I'm done. Thank God for God's presence. And if there's anything that you and I need more in our lives is the presence of God to be more real. If there's anything that we need in our churches, it's that the presence of God would be more real. Yes. Right. 
We don't need more Sunday school lessons. We don't need new programs. We don't even need new preachers. We don't need new Bibles. We don't need new songs. What we need is a manifested presence of God in our churches uh, and, beloved, in our homes uh, and in our lives. Because when that manifested presence of God comes, it'll reveal to you who you really are. And see, as long as I stay out of the presence of God, and notice this, beloved, when we walk away from God or we choose a life of sin, the first thing that goes is our prayer life. We don't want to go into the secret place no more. We don't want to get in the presence of God because we know that we're liars. Oh, we can read our Bible and we can come to the house of God, but we're not going to get in His presence. Because when the presence of God comes, we've got to get down to business. Notice here, when, the, when he heard the voice of the Lord God, when the presence of God came, the Bible says here, he says, I was afraid and I was naked and I hid myself. The presence of God will bring about the discovery of who we are, the deceit of who we are, and the discouragement of what we lost. It'll make us see who we really are. That's exactly right. See, that's why most churches don't want the presence of God today. Because they'll see who they really are. That's why these churches are growing leaps and bounds with crowds of people. They have no substance. They have no life. They may have life, but it's the wrong life. They have no manifested presence of God. It's not the real thing. Because when it comes, people have to deal with sin. You cannot come in the presence of God without dealing with sin. Now notice this. Notice this presence here. Things, things that happen. There's the communion. Why would God want to fellowship with you? You ever thought about that? Why would the God of heaven, from he whose face the heavens and the earth flees away, he who spoke this world into existence, why would he want to come and sit down in your life and say, how you doing today? Everything going good? I just want you to know I still love you. I'm still here. Why would God want fellowship with somebody like me? Why would God want communion? I don't know. I don't have the answer, but I sure am glad that he does. I can't explain to you knowing the wickedness of my heart and the deceit of my heart and the impure thoughts that go through my mind. I can't understand it. But I'm glad that he does. Not only the communion, not only the fellowship, and may I say this today, you can't have fellowship without the Son. The Son gives us access all right. The Son gives us access. The Spirit empowers us. But sin keeps us from it. Notice the confusion we're talking about in God's presence. Notice the confusion. First of all, we have trickery. They had aprons. Then they went, wasn't accusing. Notice what he said here in verse number 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the woman said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. See, they, he first tried to trick God with his aprons. And then he tried to trick God with accusing, Well, it's my wife's fault I'm in a bad mood today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the kid's fault. Well, you just don't know what the boss did to me at work last week. 
I'm guilty. Ain't no excuse. But we play trickery with God. We try to blame it on somebody else. When we realize that we can't hide it. Then we try to blame it. But you know what God wants? Are you listening? I'm closing. I'm closing. You know what God wants? Confession. Look in verse number 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Or I'm go, go back to verse number 12. Look in verse 12. And the, man, and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And notice what he said. Here, he find, you see that comma there after the tree? See, it was, there's a change in thought there. Okay. He says, I did eat. He confessed. Psalms 51 is my favorite psalm. I know people say that's crazy. It's where David's prayer with Bathsheba, he's seeing after Bathsheba, where he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make the bones that thou hast broken rejoice. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's verses 6 through 11 there. Do you know what it says? Verse, I believe it's verse 5. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. You know what's keeping you out of your fellowship with God? Your honesty. All God wants you to do is be honest. Lord, I don't like the situation. Oh, I get out in the field sometime and I, I let God have it. Well, I wouldn't do that. Why? It's already in my heart. Being honest. Lord, I'm angry at you. Lord, I'm discouraged. Well, Lord, you're right. I got jealousy toward Brother Adam. I'll be honest. God revealed something to me in the, this morning when I was down there in the pasture praying. And it, it wasn't Brother Adam. God said, you're jealous of that preacher. I, I bet I ain't seen that preacher in 15 months. I ain't talked to him in 15 months. Yeah, you. God said, you got jealous. I said, Lord, I ain't jealous. He says, you're jealous. I said, I ain't jealous, God. Yeah. Like, God said, Nathan, you're jealous. I said, Lord, you're right. I'm sorry. And he's just like the Spirit of God went, Whoa. Confession. I was honest. God wants honesty in your life. The first man said to us in the garden, He said, Lord, I'll do it my way. And you can have yours. And fellowship was broken. The last man in the garden said, Lord, I'll do it your way. And you can have mine. And fellowship's been restored. Which one do you want to be this morning? Which Adam? The first or the last? All you got to do is say, Lord, you're right. I was wrong. Lord, I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of putting on a facade. Lord, you know my heart. The Bible says that Adam was naked before him. 
The Bible tells us in Hebrews, whoever's doing the singing, come on with the verse of invitation. The Bible says there in Hebrews that all things are naked before Him with whom we have to deal with. Not being crude and I'm not being rude. But if I took off all my clothes and stood before you naked this morning, I would be exposed and I would be ashamed. That's the way you need to be with God. He already knows it. There's nothing that you're hiding from Him that He don't know. He wants you naked and open before Him this morning and say, Lord, you're right. And I'm sorry. As she said. time I need him my Lord is always there when no one else seems to have the time Won't you come to Jesus, God Jesus always cares he's walking in your garden saying where are you just what I where are you do. I, if I, I come to talk to you today on you. The I know you messed up. Just I know you up. failed. But I and still I love you. Say, I still want to be a part say, of your life. I'm through patching it up. I'm through giving you love. Though your world is torn apart. And I'll never again wash away Tell me why should right I do now, what is it in your life? For See, you're saying, well, if I go to the altar, I, I, they'll think that it's me. For me. I wouldn't care. See, you're high. Quit high. But I thank my God in heaven each night. My Lord is will not that way. I'm down on my knees I'll always patch things up I'll always give you love When your world is torn apart And I'll always wash away your sin And mend your broken heart I'll always bear all your burdens No matter what.